Stakes Up Podcast. I'm your host, Brain Freeman. And again, typically in the podcast, we visit with the student athletes here at uh, Texas State. We had a very special uh, podcast early in the week, though, that kind of focused more on the uh, T Association Hall of Honor class. Great talking with uh, the members of that class. Uh, Kevin Jurgaitis, a, a former football player back in the 70s. A couple of track, track stars and Drew Fucci and Bridget Foster Hilton. And of course, baseball great Tyler Sibley. Congratulations to those four in their induction into the uh, T Association Hall of Honor. Uh, but kind of circling things back to the student athletes here. And the fall season is not done yet. In fact, as we record this podcast today, Bobcat Volleyball is getting ready to play its opening game uh, match, I should say, the NCAA tournament. They're facing SMU in the Austin Regional. So hopefully by the time we're done, we're done with court of this, they're playing again on Friday. And uh, Bobcat football is not done yet either. Uh, seven and five record in the regular season. They're bowl bound. And again, as we record this podcast, we don't know the destination yet, but we should in the next few days or so. Uh, but some big news coming out earlier today with Bobcat football, that being the all-conference honors. And uh, two players are named first team all Sunbelt Conference. You had Ishmael Mahdi as an all-purpose player, had an incredible year this year. Um, as a kick returner, as a running back, certainly. And Mason Shipley, the other one, first team all-conference kicker for the Bobcats, the first uh, Bobcat to earn that honor since 2005, 18 years ago, Seth Jones, back in the Southland Conference days. On the topic of Mason Shipley, he's our guest on this week's podcast. He joins us now, a sophomore out of Liberty Hill, Texas, coming off a remarkable regular season. Mason, how are you? I'm doing good. Happy to be here. Glad to uh, have this conversation with you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Mason, the same, the same. And again, congratulations. You know, Thank first you. I team. That. Yeah, first team all conference honors, well deserved. You were a, a perfect fourteen to fourteen on field goals this season. Uh, as you kind of you know look back at this year, what was your first year as the full time place kicker for this program? You know, uh, what's that out the most to you? So yeah, uh, last year. Um, being a kickoff specialist, uh, kind of more long field goals. Only had one last year, but kind of stepping into this role as really, you know, the, the true place kicker, um, just doing kind of field goals. Um, it, it was, it's a big responsibility, you know. Um, we had, you know, Seth last year. He had a, he had a great season. Uh, he's doing well. And then, you know, me coming in, kind of just learning from older guys uh, that were that are at the position I'm at now um, and coming into their shoes. Uh, you know, it's a pretty cool experience. It's pretty great. We've had a, a great season. Um, definitely got to shout this out, but I give like all my glory to the Lord um, for giving mm-hmm. me the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm very blessed and just happy that, that I got this opportunity this year. You know, you, uh, you mentioned Seth Keller, who was a tremendous sure, yeah. kicker, you know, with this, yep. with this program. And as you said, now he's, he's still playing really well at Kansas, you know, for a team that's also having a really good season. So there was some unknown this year, you know, with the new staff, you know, and with that open spot for, you know, place kickers, so you bring in a new special teams coach, Daniel DePrado, and there's, you know, a, a competition for it. In fact, we, we saw, you know, uh, several different um, uh, kickoff specialists this year uh, to include yourself, you know, Matthew Velasco, Michael James as well. What was that competition like and, and what has it been like in trying to fill, you know, what was like at the beginning of the year trying to um, fill the shoes left behind by Seth Keller? <clears throat> Yeah, so, um, yeah, you got Matt Velasco, Michael James, two uh, great guys, really good teammates. Um, we, we, we all get along very well. Um, but, yeah, at the beginning of the season, um, you know, we were battling out competition, uh, as it is everywhere. And I already felt pretty strong about the, the field goal position. Um, I was just kind of used to it, just doing it all summer, spring. We always practice it. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they uh, – I think Matt started out the season on kickoff. Um, you know, they – they have really good kickoff legs, big legs, and um, they, they kind of switched off a little bit. I got a little bit of uh, a little bit of time on kickoff this year, um, so you know it was good. It was good. 
So uh, I don't think it's any coincidence. You know, you look at the turnaround this season. There, there are a lot of factors behind it. Certainly, yeah. you know, a, a new staff. Um, you know, some new players brought in. Um, just uh, again, there's a lot of you know uh, reasons why the team was so much better this year. But I don't yep. think it's any secret that the improvement of special teams has had a lot to do yep. with the success. You know, uh, yeah. between. Yeah. Your ability as a kicker, Ishmael Mahdi's ability as a returner, Hol- Holbert, Joey Holbert as well as a pump returner, the kick coverage units as well. Um, just how good, from your perspective, was special teams this season? Well, I thought we were great, yeah. Um, Coach Prado does an amazing job on kind of coaching us on belief and confidence. I think that's a, a huge thing, that if you have a coach that believes in you and is confident mm-hmm. in you doing your job, that, I mean, that changes everything. And just the way he schemes things up um, and really pours out his belief that, you know, we're going to every kickoff return that we, we get, you know, we're going to score it. You know, that's uh, like his expectation every time, like on field goal, mm-hmm. every time I touch field, you know, um, you know, we score every time. It's kind of like the mindset. So just uh, him like being around all the guys, you know, he's a really energetic dude, really, really good guy, a great mentor. Um, he, he really changed special teams around. And then, you know, he just got the players in the right spots and they're all t- on the, at the right time. And, um, yeah, we, we had a lot of success on special teams this year. Anybody who knows me knows that um, I don't believe in announcer jinxes. And yeah, so yeah. anytime you would light up a field goal, I was, you know, happy to say that uh, Mason Shipley yeah. has not missed this season, and you, and you haven't. Again, 14-14, of 14, one of three kickers in the country this year, by the way, that yeah. has not missed a kick. And the 14 field goals also ties a program record. Um, mm-hmm. when I think back though, to like, you know, big kicks, none of the games came down to whether or not yeah. you made or missed a kick next necessarily, mm-hmm. but for you, what was the, what do you think was the biggest kick you made this year? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, the biggest kick I would say, uh, the ULM game, I think was a, a big game for, for field, mm-hmm. the field goal unit. Um, we, we didn't get a PAT. We just had three straight field goals that game. Um, we won by one point. So I mean, it kind of just goes to show you how important special teams is um, mm-hmm. in that aspect. So I think uh, really just all those kicks combined, I think we're probably the biggest kicks of, of the year, just having three three field goals, just going out there doing your job, doing what you're supposed to do. And so, yeah, I think I'd say that one, that game. You know, Mason, you, you've accomplished so much in a very short amount of time here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mentioned the, you know, the year you've had, the records you've set at Texas State. You also set one – with your lone field goal last year, um, the only opportunity you got to kick was the yep. home opener against FIU. It was a 54-yarder. Yep. You nailed it. The distance, uh, the longest in uh, in program history. So, uh, how strong is your leg, and what, what's what's the uh, what's the range for you? Uh, you know, I, I like to say I have a pretty strong leg, um, range wise. I mean, we're talking, I mean, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that uh, during a game. You, know, you got wind and, and weather um, that always kind of affects the ball. But I mean, I would say probably you know around that fifty-five range um, confidently. Um, mm-hmm. you, know, you got someone on your back. I think fifty around that fifty-five range is, is um, you know you're pretty confident about. It. But anything past that is just like you know just hit a really good ball. We just try to hit the same ball every time. But yeah. So I mentioned you're from Liberty Hill, went to a really, yes, really yep. good high school, you know, yep. football program. And, but your your college career starts in Stillwater at Oklahoma yep. State. Yes, mm-hmm. um, it didn't work out for you there. You transferred no. to Texas State. So when you when you were in the portal, it's such a, you know, a uh, a hot button topic these days, especially this time of year oh, yeah. as the regular yep. season is 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 ended. <laughs> Players are are entering the portal left and right. When you entered the portal yourself three years ago and you're looking for a new home, what was it about Texas State? So I had a connection with Coach Whitworth. He was here mm-hmm. a couple of years back. He was a special teams guy. Before I even went to Oklahoma State, uh, we, we were kind of texting, uh, kind of wanted me here. And so I went into Stillwater, and uh, things just didn't really work out the way I thought they would. And so I just gave him a text. Uh, he still wanted me, so I came here. And just kind of that connection that I had with him in high school uh, followed into the college, my college career. And I felt like it was a really good opportunity to just come here and see, uh, what the opportunity presents itself. You know, I, again, I mentioned the transfer portal and the fact that it's a hot button topic. And I feel like there's a lot of debate about it, yep. you know, from fans, you know, some yeah. are, are very much, you know, on board with it. Others are not, um, yeah. tell me from, from a student athlete's perspective, 
you know, what does the transfer portal, what opportunities does it give you? Um, are you, are, are you a fan of it kind of thing? You know, what is it a student athlete's perspective from entering and being in the portal? Yeah, I think, uh, the portal, I mean, it's good. It can be good and it can be bad. There's, there's, mm-hmm. uh, two ways to it. It's either good or bad for you. I think that if you just, if you, if you don't feel like they, you're getting treated the correct way and, you know, you got the stats and, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it and you transfer, um, you know, it might be good for you, but if you don't really, you know, have the stats, if you don't, um, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side is what a lot of people mm-hmm. say. Um, and, and I think a lot of people right now are kind of just transferring to transfer, you know, see what they can get. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't work out for, for most people. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just the grass isn't greener on, on the other side all the time. I think uh, people got to realize that, but I mean, if you, if you're in a situation to where, you know, you're just really not liking it, um, it's just not working out for you. I think it's a good opportunity to see, see what you can get out of it. You know, uh, when looking, looking up more, more information about you yep. and, and, I, and I find that, um, you know, you're, uh, you're in a family of kickers, your twin That's brother, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, Matthew is a really good yeah. kicker at the University of Hawaii. Another another sure. brother of yours, Michael, is also a collegiate mm-hmm. kicker. So, um, for the three of you guys, you know, growing up, you know, pursuing this um, and getting to where all three yeah. of you are now, uh, how much have you enjoyed that? No, it's awesome. I think growing up, uh, just the competition between uh, all of us, me and Matthew, uh, we're twin brothers. There's a lot mm-hmm. of competition between me and him. Our older brother, Michael, he's two years older than us. He kind of sparked the interest in kicking. Uh, he went out one day and he just started kicking and it, pretty good at it better than everybody else. So he he started the spark for me and Matthew. We got really serious into it in high school. And then in high school, we would just kind of switch uh, kickers. Like we, we held for each other. So one person would do a kickoff and then the PAT field goal. And the next person would do the next kickoff PAT field goal. So just having my brothers around, um, kind of coaching each other, that, that's a big thing is, is we'd always kind of evaluate each other. we coach each other, tell each other what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. And me and Matthew, we still do that to this day. I don't really have like a kicking coach. He, he's, you know, we kind of text mm. each other, um, you know, other than Coach Prado, of course. Um, we'll text each other and, and, and see what we did wrong and what we did right. I think that's a pretty cool, pretty neat thing that uh, twin kickers, so – yeah, you know what's funny too. Uh, when I was referencing your your kicks this year, there wasn't none of them were like you know with one second left to win or lose yeah, a game. Yeah. But your brother uh, yeah. Matthew in the regular season finale for Hawaii, they're facing mm-hmm. Colorado State. Game is tied, and he is kicking in a pressure situation oh, yeah. to win the game, and he did it. He won the game, yep. you know, for Hawaii. How proud were you of your twin brother in that moment? No, yeah, that, that's awesome. Awesome for him. Uh, he, so that's like his second game winner of the year, actually. And mm-hmm. so, so he's, he's had a really big year, uh, kicked a few 50 plus yarders this year. So it's pretty proud of him. Um, that's awesome. But yeah, that, that last one this past weekend where he was sprinting out there, they, they thought he was mm-hmm. out of balance and he goes, doesn't even take his steps and just kicks it. You know, it just shows a lot, a lot about how much talent that he has and, and, you know, really how good he is at, at his job. Yeah. You know, when I think of social media, uh, a lot of people use it for self-promotion. Um, yep. uh, but when I look through your timeline, and by the way, if our fans want to look you up, it's Mason yep. Shipley, the number one uh, on Twitter. Yep. Twitter. Uh, that's your user handle. Like, everything is retweets about your brothers, right? Yeah. I, I mentioned you're the game winner from Matthew because that's at the top of your timeline yeah. right now because you retweeted <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, I think even that that's up there more uh, uh, yeah. and not your own accolade from the Sunbelt yeah. Conference. It shows yeah, how yeah. much you, you, know, you, you care for your brothers. So yeah. Yeah. Um, why is that significant for you to use that platform to promote not yourself but your family? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not I'm not a huge like social media user. If you you know you look me up, I'm not I'm not huge on it. Uh, just never really mm-hmm. have been. But yeah, I just seen uh, I like you know family uh, twin brother. I just I've always mm-hmm. kind of uh, just retweeted stu- his stuff um, because whenever I was at Oklahoma State, you know, not playing. I guess even my first year here, I wasn't playing. He was playing. I thought it was pretty cool. So I just you know retweeted and I, I've always done it ever since. So. But that's kind of why I do it. Um, just always done it. Just kind of have it, I guess you could say. But yeah. So you know, a year ago, um, again, you were the kickoff specialist, not yes, you know, the place kicker that was Seth Keller and the and the mm-hmm. team. 
you know, of course, there's no hiding around it or getting around it. It was a tough year. You know, it led to a, a change in leadership, you know, within the program, but mm-hmm. a change that's been for the better and things have certainly worked out, you know, really well. Yep. And now that this program is in a position to to do something that's never been done before, and that's playing a bowl mm-hmm. game. And and you yep. are a significant part of that. You know, this this program joined the FBS ranks um, 11 years ago, 2012. They had been mm-hmm. eligible twice, didn't get to go eligible this year for the first time since 2014 uh the seven wins the most again in nine years and um in 14 the team got left out but this year they're going to go what does it mean for you uh to be a part of a season like this oh it's awesome it's amazing i mean there's a lot of people in in the country that you know don't get to go to a bowl game this year um and matter of fact a lot of people that might have never been to a bowl game in their college career so Mm -hmm. it's definitely something special uh, I know my brother's been to one uh, and, you know, he tell me about the experience. Um, they won, they got a ring. So I think that's just so cool that, you know, we get to bond as a team, go somewhere and, and showcase our talent on live television. I think it's awesome. And you see the way that the fans have really, you know, bought in this year. Yes, sir, I, yes. There was when the team clinched bowl eligibility, the win over Georgia Southern. Of course, mm-hmm. there was that great scene, the river with the team and yeah. and the way that, the you know, I think some fans even showed up to that as well and jumped into the river. And, you know, the way they've been reacting on social media, the, the, the attendance this year, that set a record this season. Over 120,000, I think, total attendance this year at, uh, at, at Bobcat Stadium was set. <laughs> you know, a record. Um, It really feels like it's been just tremendous fan service this year for the football program. As you've gotten to know the Texas State community, the student body, you know, the the community of San Marcos, how happy are you for the fan base that they finally get to enjoy a year like this? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it it changes, changes everything. Having, having more fans at our games is such an advantage to us because, you know, the student section, they're always chirping and whatnot. But, yeah, having the place packed, is, it's huge for recruits, too. They see that, and they're like, oh, I want to go here. So I think that's that's really cool. I think that's part of the reason we're probably going to get bigger recruits this year is because of our fans. You know, they come to the games. They see that uh, the environment, uh, the tradition we have here. And I think it's just awesome that, that we had so many people come out to our games and, and the new lights, the new, uh, you mm-hmm. know, all the cameras, the, the flashes, I guess, uh, in fourth quarter. I think that's really cool. Uh, it's a big for the players, yeah. too. Uh, they, they, we all love it. So I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, Mason, this has been awesome. Getting a chance to, to talk with you, you know, after as you, uh, you know, uh, finished out the regular season, you know, uh, perfect again, uh, uh, 14 for 14 this year and a well-deserved honors for, you know, Sunbelt Conference uh, first team, uh, uh, first team all-conference honors, you know, as a place kicker. So thanks again, Mason, and uh, looking forward to the bowl game and, and maybe some big kicks uh, still to come this season here in 2023. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate uh, your time. You got it. That again, Mason Shipley joining us on the State Sub Podcast, team the Bobcats Bowl Bound. We're going to find out their destination here in just uh, a few days or so, so looking forward to that. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of the State Sub Podcast. For Mason, I'm Brent Free, but as always, reminding you to keep your states up, and we'll see you next time.